it's a new year so I'm going to make a new carb conversion installation video this is an automatic transmission conversion um, I made a video last year uh, showing a, a five-speed conversion installation uh, the automatic uh, transmission conversions have a few extra pieces so let me show you uh, how I installed it and what those pieces are as before I'm going to start in the front of the car and work my way towards the rear this is the tank pickup that goes into the fuel tank just sits in the tank like that and it has a centered brass filter element on the end of it that will filter out the little bits of trash that tend to accumulate in fuel tanks if you look at my baffle you can see some little bits of trash and the filter element will prevent anything from getting pulled up inside the fuel system now the pickup sits in a baffle this is a 304 stainless steel baffle that mounts on the stud that's cast into the tank and then the pickup sits in the baffle like that and what this will do is this will ensure that the pickup remains immersed in fuel even if the tank level drops below the edge of the baffle say like if you're going uphill or going around corners things like that and the baffle has a series of little holes drilled around the base of it that's how fuel will get in even if the tank level drops below the edge of the baffle but because the holes are so small it's hard for the fuel to escape and that'll keep your pickup immersed in fuel even when your tank is low and there's the pickup installed in the tank now we need to run a piece of hose from the pickup to the old K-Jet return line. We're going to be repurposing the old K-Jet return line as a front to rear fuel line. So we need to connect it to the pickup. And there's the piece of hose connecting the pickup to the old K-Jet return line. There is a T in the K-Jet return line that ordinarily goes to the backside of the accumulator. Now theoretically you could leave that um, hose in place but if the accumulator ever leaks internally, if the diaphragm in the accumulator ever goes bad you will end up sucking air um, rather than fuel from the tank. Now I provide a barbed plug and I even provide a length of fresh hose that you can use to cap off that T in the um, return line and then you're guaranteed never to suck air. It's a little bit easier to cap off the T in the old return line if you pull the accumulator out. And then of course once the accumulator's out it'd be silly to put it back in. Uh, on my own car, I use the length of hose to join together the uh, inlet and the outlet of the old outbound fuel line. 
just to keep trash out of them. And then that's the length of hose that I use to cap off the T in the old return line, which is now being used as a front to rear fuel line. I'm going to start in the engine compartment with the fuel pump. This conversion uses a mechanical fuel pump operated by a lobe on the passenger side camshaft. Now for the purposes of this video I'm going to be reinstalling my usual fuel pump. The owner will of course be getting a new fuel pump. The fuel pump mounts where this block off plate is on the back side of the passenger side cylinder head. All DeLoreans have a place to mount a mechanical fuel pump. From the factory it has a block off plate. We're going to remove that block off plate, put a couple of studs in, and mount the fuel pump. And there's the fuel pump mounted to the passenger side cylinder head. I provide stainless steel nuts because they won't rust to the studs which will make future removal much easier. Now we need to run a piece of hose from the fuel pump to the old K-Jet return line. And there's the hose connecting the fuel pump to the old K-Jet return line. You have to use a flexible piece of hose because the engine moves independently of the frame. All vehicles do that. These are the stainless steel plugs that I provide and fresh rubber boots that will plug where the K-Jet injectors used to be. I provide O-rings with a square cross-section to seal the intake manifold to the cylinder heads. I have found that square cross-section O-rings seal better than O-rings with a circular cross-section. Every carb conversion gets test driven on my car first and when I'm finished I unbolt the manifold and the carburetor as a unit so all the owner has to do is pick them up and drop them on the engine. I provide new bolts that are the proper length for a Peugeot manifold but they go in the same location as the bolts that held the old K-Jet manifold. The fuel filter is a standard Ford fuel filter that screws into the front of the carburetor. I've had some quality issues with the fuel filters that are sold by the chain parts houses so I'm now using Napa fuel filters. The fuel line is made out of metal. Again this is standard Ford practice. You can use a metal fuel line on the engine because the pump does not move independently of the carburetor. On the fuel filter it's a flare fitting and on the fuel pump it is a compression fitting. And there's the throttle cable bracket installed. Because the carburetor throttle plates are way back here whereas the old K-Jet throttle spool used to be way out here 
the outer sheath on the throttle cable needs to be cut shorter. Only cut the outer sheath. Do not cut the inner cable. Pull the inner cable back at the accelerator pedal so you don't accidentally cut it at the same time you're cutting the outer sheath. If you do accidentally cut the inner cable, I provide an extra cable stop. You can use that cable stop at the accelerator pedal to hold a piece of 1 16th wire rope and run a new replacement inner cable. I have a video on YouTube showing how to do that. Because this is an automatic conversion, it uses stainless steel clevises instead of a plastic throttle ball. This is the clevis that attaches to the throttle cable and then there's a second clevis that attaches to the cable that goes to the governor inside the automatic transmission that will pass through this hole here. The throttle clevis attaches here. The shift cable clevis attaches here. When positioning the throttle cable cable stop, make sure you do not locate it back so far that it will prevent the throttle plates from closing all the way. Right now, the carburetor is in its cold choke settings, which means that the throttle plates are cracked open slightly. If I was to position the cable stop with the throttle plates where they currently are located, they would not be able to close all the way. I need to put the carburetor into its warm choke settings when the throttle plates will be fully closed before positioning the cable stop. To do that, I'm going to take tension off of the throttle mechanism while holding the tension off I'm going to push down on the choke mechanism connecting rod and while holding it down I will let the throttle mechanism close. That will put the carburetor into its warm choke settings and the throttle plates will be all the way closed so I can position the cable stop. With one hand take tension off the throttle mechanism then push down on the choke connecting rod then let the throttle mechanism go. The carburetor is now in its warm choke settings. I can position the cable stop in such a way that it will not prevent the throttle plates from closing all the way. Now it is time to attach the vacuum lines. The vacuum lines are different sizes so you can't mix them up. This is 5 sixteenths of an inch. This is PCV. Working backwards, it goes from the PCV passages in the carb base through the PCV valve. Notice the orientation. The brass barb goes towards the oil filler cap. Through the oil filler cap to the air filter housing. This is 3 eighths of an inch. This is HVAC brake booster. Now my T is over here. But most people have the T back here. So you would go from the 3 eighths barb to the T here. This is 3 sixteenths of an inch. This is spark advance. This goes to the spark advance diaphragm on your distributor. And the hose runs directly 
to the diaphragm. There is no electrical cutoff solenoid. Now this is an automatic conversion. So it has another 3 16 barb that goes to the modulator valve that is in the front of the transmission. I don't have a modulator valve on my 5 speed so I have a cap on it right now. And that is all of the vacuum lines. The last thing to connect is the choke heater. This is 12 volts keyed to ignition. 12 volts that is only live when ignition is on. There are many different places that you can tap in to the car's electrical system for the choke heater. Mine is tied in to the old idle speed ECU power supply and it runs through the same grommet as the distributor pickup wires. The last step is to fill the carburetor manually. When you very first install the conversion the carburetor will be totally empty and you'll have to crank the engine for a while to move fuel from the front of the car to the rear of the car to start the engine. Now the battery in my camera is dying so I will show you tomorrow how I did that but all the steps that I have just showed you are all you need to do to install the carb conversion. I put these spark plug wires back in. I had pulled them out to make it easier to work on that side of the engine. The carburetor is full of fuel, so the conversion is now ready to start. So I will show you tomorrow how I filled the carburetor and made sure I didn't have any fuel leaks and then started the engine. As I explained yesterday, when you very first install the conversion, the carburetor will be totally empty. There will not be any fuel inside the bowl. Now you can fill the bowl by cranking the engine until it has drawn enough fuel from the front of the car to the rear of the car, which will take somewhere between 5 and 10 seconds, or you can fill the bowl manually, which only has to be done one time, the very first time. My experience has been that a rattle can paint lid filled up to the top of those protrusions is the proper amount of fuel to fill the bowl. So now, the carburetor has fuel in it, and I can start the engine. As mentioned, you only have to manually fill the carburetor the first time. The bowl will hold fuel for several weeks. Conversion. 
And so that is how you install an automatic transmission carb conversion. Now the automatics have a few elements on the throttle mechanism that are unique to them. So let me conclude by highlighting those unique elements. The first thing to show you is the cable attachments. Um, on the automatic conversions I use stainless steel clevises uh, rather than the plastic throttle ball and it's because the lower cable attachment uh, looks and works better with a uh, clevis than it does with a plastic throttle ball end. And on the automatics you need two cable attachment points. This is the throttle cable that's attached to your accelerator pedal. But then you have a second cable that is attached to the governor inside the automatic transmission that controls how many RPMs before the uh, transmission shifts. And the cables move in opposite directions. As this cable moves towards the firewall, this cable moves towards the rear of the car. Um, that's just like a, a K-Jet throttle spool. They move in opposite directions on the K-Jet throttle spool. The next thing to show you is the uh, full throttle kick down micro switch. That is uh, transferred over from your uh, K-Jet installation and the bracket that it's mounted to is slotted so the switch can be adjusted fore and aft. And what this will do is when you open the throttle plates all the way it um, closes the switch which will ground a circuit inside the automatic uh, shift controller that will cause it to jump to the next lower gear you know like if you were passing somebody on the highway and that is transferred over from your K-Jet installation The next thing to show you is this solenoid here. Um, these are new. I've started providing these with my automatic conversions. Um, you can wire the solenoid into the line that powers the clutch on your air conditioning compressor. So that way, whenever the air conditioning compressor is engaged, it'll kick the solenoid out and press on the throttle linkage. Um, Five-speed owners, we don't need this, but um, automatic owners, they have the load of the torque converter, which you know robs several hundred RPM off the idle speed. So. Um, to compensate for both the torque converter and the AC compressor, you got to dial the idle speed up. Well, you can wire this solenoid into the line that powers the clutch on the compressor. And then whenever the compressor is engaged, So those solenoids are kind of a new um, option that I'm providing with the automatic conversions. So 
those are the elements of an automatic conversion that you won't find on a five speed um, the automatics have a few um, things that are unique to them.